first. Welcome back to The Line and our final topic this week. A noted national pollster, Emerson College of Boston, recently released a poll that showed the governor's race in New Mexico is super close right now. Michelle Lujan Grisham polled at 42 percent, her opponent Steve Pierce at 40 percent. But 18 percent of us who were registered voters polled as undecided. Tom, those numbers surprise you or is it about the pollster themselves or what, what's your thought on this one? Yes. Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> okay. yeah, Griff the lion is the mascot for Emerson College. <laughs> and I, I think we were all better not knowing that as right. well as the results of this particular poll. Because I'm not sure that it, uh, you know, while it, I think it really benefited the fundraising of uh, both the both uh -huh. governor, gubernatorial candidates uh -huh. because all all of a sudden it's a close race. Right. We gotta raise money. That's oh my right. gosh, we could win this. We That's could right. lose this. Oh, come on, folks. Right. You know, let's, uh, so I, I'm not really that, you know, it, they're numbers now, it's a snapshot in time. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are m many other things right now that could shape the future of the election uh, that are out of the hands of both candidates. Good point. What do you make of this poll? Early polls are always tricky. We're bef they just are. before Labor Day, it's just very tricky. And at this stage yeah. in the polling, and just polling mm -hmm. in general, you talked a little bit about the methodology, right. you know, the sample size and so forth. Sure. It doesn't really account for the enthusiasm gap too that we're seeing closing so rapidly among Democratic voters. You know, we've seen a huge increase in voter turnout among Democrats nationally. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in the Albuquerque municipal election. We saw it during the June primary. So it's really hard to gauge whether or not, you know, this is gonna be this is gonna be the real deal in the next, mm -hmm. you know, sixty days. Let me ask you this as the Democrat days. of the table though. Is it as is it not <laughs> <laughs> The unavowed, the other, you know, whatever the term No, I'm, pr yeah. I'm proud of you're it. You're proud of it. Is it not better for all Democrats to actually feel like you're in a close race? Isn't it not just better? You know, well, there was a thing out, there was a thing out there a few it. months ago that she was a shoe in for this thing. Yeah, and that's like, not accurate either. Exactly. We don't want, yes, and you know, when we talk about the House races as well, you know, we right. don't want to take anything for granted. Historically, though, in the journal referenced this, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. the president's party is typically not the one that wins during his first midterm election succeeding his um, inauguration. Mm -hmm. And so it's highly unlikely. I think it was, it wasn't, gosh, it was 1926 with Calvin Coolidge the last time the president actually picked up, mm -hmm. the president's party picked up the same um, seats in the House. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is likely, and, but I don't think that, you know, Congresswoman, Michelle Lujan Grisham is a shoe in, and I don't think we should think. So I think to answer your question, yes, it is a good thing right. for Democrats so we can consolidate our base and really continue to be enthusiastic That's about right. getting behind her. That's right. But I don't think it's as close as they're saying it is. Is it as close, Justine? What do you think? It's really early and yeah. polling is fluid. I think there are other indicators okay. out there going on right now that maybe give us a better sense. Mm -hmm. One of them is the somewhat radical and I would say unlawful position that the Secretary of State has taken that she can institute straight party voting, contrary to the change in law in 2001, contrary to the many bills that have been run in the legislature that have died trying to reinstate it. Um, and we're gonna see that litigated. Mm -hmm. But that tells me that the Democrats think this is tight. And mm -hmm. whether or not the governor's race is tight, I don't know. I don't know what internal polling says. But having, after the Secretary of State said that she was going to hold hearings, held off on this until the last minute, mm -hmm. It's a pretty big indicator they think it's close. Mm. Michael, what do we make of this uh, poll, quote unquote? Is this something that we should take seriously? I, I say again, we're just before Labor Day and everything changes starting next week. You know, it's, 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 it's difficult. I, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not overly concerned with it. I don't, yeah. I think uh, it'll all shake out, at, you know, as, as things get closer mm -hmm. and, and we'll see what happens. I guess um, just adding another comment, I'm, I'm just happy to see an Indian woman uh, in New Mexico, having the opportunity to run, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, my own bias is because I love my grandmother and my mother was that we need some good, strong women. Yeah, here, here. Yeah. Tom, what did you what did you just make? What do you make of this overall situation here in New Mexico? We've got we've got Gary Johnson's back in the picture. We've <laughs> got you know what I mean in the Senate yeah. so, Senate race. It's very interesting. It's, isn't it's fun it? to watch. Yeah. The election is fun <laughs> to watch all of a sudden. So. Right. Uh, you know, specifically to Gary Johnson. Uh, Gary Johnson helps people like uh, Janice Arnold Jones, uh, Yvette Harrell, uh, right. and their respective races for CD1 right. and CD2. That's right. Uh, it doesn't necessarily help Pierce at all, uh, I think, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 add, it brings Republicans and independent, right-leaning,
winning, a chance to be engaged in the race, mm -hmm. uh, gets him out to vote. So between that and then what uh, what was mentioned about the straight party, the the straight ballot, mm -hmm. um, that was that could be a potential huge game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you know I. I'm not a, necessarily a big fan of it. I think you let people decide for themselves, uh, you know, just checking just one button just as it puts everybody's campaigns to shame because it says, you know what, doesn't matter because we're just going to focus on one mentality one way or another and let's see who has the most ballots at the end of the right. day. Is this a question of nostalgia? It's very nostalgic to think about straight party ticket voting. It just seemed to make sense 20 years ago, I 30 think, years ago. I think it's Does a it question of now? enfranchisement and okay. making voting as easy as possible for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's eligible to register to vote, that's registered to vote, making it easy. The ballot can be intimidating. We've seen studies over and over again that, you know, people, they go and they even see the sample ballot beforehand and it's like, wow, you know, so then you just see a whole lot of drop off down ballot. Mm. And this gives folks the opportunity, I think, to participate in down ballot races. So I applaud the Secretary of State for doing this. And I think it's about enfranchisement. It's about making voting as easy as possible but you for those that are eligible. You want people to vote for someone that they've actually researched or know. Sure. You know? I and mean, if you're just doing, oh, I don't know who to choose between these two people, you know, I, if it's party, then, you know, if you don't know who to vote for, then don't vote. Mm. Well, we're encouraging them not to even look down the <laughs> They're not, <laughs> in many yeah. cases. Say, say that again, Justine, say that one more time. I think straight party voting discourages uh -huh. even looking down the ballot, because hmm. you just yeah. can be in and out in 10 seconds. Yeah. So I think we're just dumbing it down. If the Republican side of the ticket had a straight party ballot possibility, would that be okay for you or? or I oppose straight party voting. Just but, straight, straight but, okay. but I'm coming at it from a legal perspective here in okay. New Mexico. The trend across the country has been to abandon it. Okay. We, we eliminated it in 2001. It's a legislative decision. And right. certainly, you know, if the legislature wants to take that up, but it's not the Secretary of State's decision. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mike, I'll touch on that if you would. That's, that is interesting when you think about it. It's, it is one person's decision. She is the Secretary of State. But are we better off as an, elect, as an elect, electorate having this scheme in play? Uh, based on what I've just heard, I think not. Okay. Yeah. I think. The legal issues are difficult. The, yeah, the, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I guess I'd be curious to know what the research is as to other states and why they've chosen to abandon that, that, that approach. Mm -hmm. Well, and plus, are you going to have a decline to state party? Ooh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, you've had, uh, you know, uh, in, enrollment in the Democratic Party, enrollment in the Republican Party have dropped, right. respectively, right. and they've gone to the middle. So where, right. where's the DTS in all of this? That's a good and the point. independents and the libertarians and the greens. Oh, the libertarians, and absolutely. Sure. This whole diversity of thought. Yeah. And the socialists and the communists. And <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, all but that last one. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, that's a legit point. I mean, people need representation, legitimate representation, no matter what they feel. If you have enough people to get on the ballot, you deserve some, you know, respect. And that's what ballot access mm -hmm. is about. But street yeah. party ticket doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only way to vote. I mean, okay. people still have the option to vote down ballot. They still have the option to take as much time as they need to research the candidates, to look at, you mm -hmm. know, voting potentially for you know, somebody who is an independent, who is a libertarian, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the only mechanism on the ballot machine. Good point. So I think, yeah. you know, it's just another option. And I don't understand why having another option is such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Good points tonight on all the subjects. Really appreciate your time. Absolutely.